What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to talk about how we feel about the Harley 120th anniversary reveal. So, big announcement for Harley. Big year. We've talked about this before. 120th. Uh, it's a big deal. Not a lot of companies have been around for that long. No, it's a huge deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're we're a little behind the eight ball on this one. Well, life happens. But um, <laughs> we just figured we'd give all the other experts a chance to make their videos. There and you then, go. There you then go. we'd do ours. So we're, we're joining the club of, of Harley experts. Because you know we That's have That's tongue in cheek, obviously, guys. We, you know we have an opinion. Of course we have an opinion. I mean, everybody's got an opinion. Got to share. So, yeah. So overall, um, thoughts, broad terms on on the release itself. The re the release itself. Um, I feel like, you know, we've talked about this a little bit already. We know Harley has a lot of plans to release things over the course of this hundred twenty yeah. year. That being said, I feel like this video release was a little light. It, it was, but. I would say that I think they did that on purpose. Yeah. Because past past have been forty minutes, and then they got people griping that it's too long. Too long. Now it's too short. So yeah, it just goes to show you can't make everybody happy. <laughs> Quite honestly, I mean, I thought it was I liked it better short. Yeah. Um, you know why just you know give away every detail when you want people to come down to the dealerships and mm -hmm. find these things out, you know, for themselves. Yeah the specifics of, you know, maybe each one of those things they talked about. So I thought 18 minutes was, you know, a good number to keep people's attention and then not get boring. It was a quick 18 minutes. It was quick. Um, I like that they use social media influencers for the first time. Really, yes. In, yeah. in, in a video release. I thought I thought that that was pretty cool. So congr yeah, I thought congrats, that was, congrats to those guys. I yeah. thought that was cool. And, you know, mm -hmm. just, just remember that, you know, it wasn't that long ago we were all griping that Harley doesn't use yep. these influencers that, you know, have such a big uh, reach within the community, and now they are. So, I mean, let's let's remember that before we, you know, step forward. Make any complaints I, I, about it? I think you know? I think it's a step forward. Well, I thought it was cool. I think it's a step forward. Um, I think they picked a good, you know, pair to do it. Mm -hmm. They've got a good channel, a good following. Sure, there could have been any number of other people they use, but yeah. it's a start. It's a start. So that was cool. Um, first thing, man, they rolled into the red paint. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know I'm a fan. I know you are. Uh, I can take it or leave it. I think it's a nice red. It's kind of more of a maroon than a red. Yeah, it's a deep, um, it's a deep, you know. Yeah. Reddish, maroonish, whatever you want. I forget what they, what did they call it? Oh, uh, man, we probably should look that. I don't remember what it was called. Yeah. But um, but it, it's, it's a, <clears throat> listen, it's a nice red. It's, I think it's, it's got nice. some flake in it. It's good Harley paint. Um... I like the moniker, the the hundred twentieth anniversary badge. It's on. I like it too. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think it's nice. I think they they haven't used a lot of red like that in CBOs and anniversary yeah. edition bikes. So I think that's a cool change. I think the lineup of red bikes look cool. I know, you know, a lot of people out there are saying that's all they did was change some paint colors, but. It, I not, mean, I thought it was not cool. really, but yeah, I know people were saying that. Let, let's like right off the bat while we're here. Let's talk about the CVO. I kind of feel like the CVO is taking a a mixed critique by people. Well, everyone's seen the meme. Yeah. And I, I, I personally think it's ridiculous, but I get I get the, the joke of it. But, I mean, if you look at that CVO, if you actually zoom in on it, maybe, yeah. and see the actual paint job instead of just seeing the red with a little bit of the gold mm -hmm. lines... Uh, there's a lot to that paint job, yeah. and I think those the eagle on the on, on the, the fairing, fairing yeah. with the the wings working all the way down through mm -hmm. the tank, the side yep. cover, and the bags. I think it's a pretty dope paint job. Apparently, other people this thing is cheesy, but and it looks like a hot gold wing, but I think it looks pretty good. Plus, the black has that like red in it in the sunlight, which I haven't seen personally, but that's yeah. how they described it. Right. So it's I not your yeah. run of the mill. They didn't put your run of the mill Harley Vivid black paint on there. No, it's so, very different. So that that's cool. It, it's I, I just I I feel like if you're comparing this paint 
to your, you know, father's or grandfather's 1980 gold wing paint, then you're, you're just a Harley hater. I, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I think it's a cool paint job. Well, I think you it was know. nice that Harley actually gave the Harley haters something to work with. There you you know what I mean? Like, otherwise you'd have been reaching, so. But I prefer this to actually, and, and I might even take some hate for this, I prefer this paint to a lot of the CVO paints we've had in recent history. I haven't really liked any of the recent CVO paint jobs, so I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I feel like it's it's more Harley. It's more true to the brand. It's, I mean, since they came out a number of years ago with, you know, the one on the tank, I mean, that was like the last... Yeah. CVO paint job that I, I really if, liked. If I was going to nitpick at it, I would say that I'm not a huge fan of like gold accents, which yeah. they have, you know, some in, you know, in the motor and around in different little spots. You know, I could take gold, you know, you know, take it or leave it, yeah. but but that would be nitpicking. Yeah. You know. But even then, I mean, the paint, it's like the paint itself is just, I think the paint's good. I think it's nice too. I like that. Um, yeah. What else? So. I think the message, the marketing message in the video I thought was really cool because the marketing message in the video, they came out, they came out, they talked about the breakout mm -hmm. and the classic lines of the Harley breakout with the rake and how it does have that like old school kind of Harley look. It's got like that kind of soft tail deuce rake to it. It's a long looking bike. And the way they designed it, you know, with the bars makes it, I think, look even longer. Mm -hmm. So... I think they did a good job with the breakout. Um, I think the breakout from where it was when it came out that first time with the three and a half gallon tank and well, everything that it had, yeah. um, they've moved it up and they've updated it. It's got the five gallon tank. It's got cruise control. It's got trash control. It's got a 117. I mean, damn. It, yeah. It's, you know, I, I think it's a cool bike. I think it's a cool bike. I thought... I mean, maybe I was out of the loop. I thought when it was out, there was there was a, a good following for it. I thought people mm -hmm. liked it. Yeah. Um, so bringing it back with the bigger tank, you know, is a is a big deal. The, the tiny, I, who wants a tiny tank? I think on the knock bike? was. I think the knock was the tank. Yeah. I, I mean, that was always always my knock was the tank, and I felt like the way the f the fender and the rear the old breakout looked with that three gallon tank, things just looked out of balance to me. Yeah. But now, you know, I think the bike really looks, it looks beefy. It's got to be pretty peppy with that 117 mm -hmm. for the size of that bike. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that. It's, it's, uh, it's cool. And then on the flip side of that, so they talked about that classic, you know, the classic Harley lines and everything else. They came back and they said, and, and they said these very words, the Sportster is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the Sportster that we've all known throughout time and the air-cooled, you know, Evo engine that was on there. But... It's a cool looking bike. It's stripped down, you know. Yeah. It's um, it's got the Revo nine seven five in it. It should be it should be a fun bike to ride. It's obviously a little small for me, and you know. Yeah, I, I don't usually have a huge opinion on Sportsters. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad they're saying it's here to stay. I think it has a place for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, uh, there's definitely people that love them. There's a huge following for Sportsters, you, you know, even amongst men. Yep. Um, that love them and swear by them. So. I mean, I'm cool that it's here. I just, it's not something I get excited about. And I love the badge on the Nightster. So when you look at the Harley badge they put on the Nightster, it's that old, like, orange and yellow swoop with the Harley Davidson on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was a cool way to say, here's, like, a piece of classic Harley on this new bike. So I like that, how they incorporated that into the design. That was pretty neat. Um, yeah. And, you know, they gave the Nightster, you know, different risers. It was, it's, it's more than going from a, the Sportster to that Nightster Special is, is much more than just tens in color. You know, it's different risers, different riding position. They got a nice digital gauge that's right up in front of you that those risers allow you to put in there. So I think, I don't know, I think it's a cool bike. Happy with what they did. Okay. Honestly. So let's talk about the Road Glide 3. Mm. I'm glad to see. I think this is my biggest disappointment. I'm, I'm glad to see they made a trike out of a road glide. Mm -hmm. I am looking at this road glide trike, which is kind of a modified freewheeler with a road glide fairing on it, right? right. No lowers, no tour pack. Looks kind of weird to me. Um, I would prefer, if I was going trike and I was going road glide, I feel like I would want an ultra. I would want lowers. I would want a tour pack. I, w I would want that. You know. So I, I don't think it looks weird. Mm -hmm. I think it looks sporty. I think it looks cool. I like it. Yeah. 
but I do feel like it sh it needs to be an option to have it to be an ultra to basically be a yeah. full you know touring bike touring bike yeah um that was my only knock and it it really wasn't something like i mean right off the bat i was just happy that they have a road glide fairing mm -hmm. on a trike now which i feel like road glide fans which there's a lot of them have, have wanted that for a while i yeah. mean there's a lot of guys that like road glides that are now moving into that time where they need a trike and yeah. having the batwing as the only option i thought was pretty lame so love to see that, but I that is a, that is I thought the same thing right off the bat. I'm like, you don't have it, you don't have a, a tour pack, mm -hmm. you know. Lowers, that's something. I mean, yeah, that option's great. Not everybody likes them, but that tour pack, like you, you already don't have saddlebags. You just have whatever that little trunk is, which yeah. I think from what I've heard is, is is a good size trunk. I feel like the trunk looks spacious, <laughs> but just looking at the video, and I haven't seen one in person. I'm concerned that the way that trunk opens. That you can't even put a tour pack on there. You couldn't even no. put a market on there. I don't even see how. Yeah, I don't even see how so, you do it that like trunk drilling looks like, or something. That, that trunk looks like it opens up. It so, opens up. Yeah. So I don't know that you could open up that trunk with a tour pack there. I don't think that any of that yeah. works. I don't that think being said, either. I think you probably have more room in that trunk than you have in two saddlebags that you would have on a regular special or a regular. Yeah, I'm sure. Bag. I'm sure. Um, so, but uh, overall, I'm, I'm excited to see it's there and that they have it now. Um, Moving in the right direction. Would love to see it <laughs> as. You know the the full touring trike, but mm -hmm. um, the other thing with with the trikes, I, I was surprised to actually see the free the regular old free wheel come back. The free wheeler's back, and they did something cool with it. They you you can now block it black it out so that you can have their dark custom package on that free wheeler, which I think just lends itself. I feel like the the dark custom package, like whatever the black exhaust, black engine, all of that lends itself to a younger demographic yeah. than a chrome bike does yeah. i still i mean every there's always be people that love chrome bikes but me personally and maybe i'm wrong i feel like older people older guys older riders have more appreciation for a chrome bike than younger riders do for sure that's you know no doubt there so, um i think that's cool i just I don't see a lot of the freewheelers. We don't here. And I don't know their numbers. Obviously, Harley does. Mm -hmm. I don't know their numbers on selling those. I just didn't feel like there was a huge enough market to like keep it around. But I think I, obviously I'm wrong. I'd love to see where they're at. Like I, I don't see any. I, I don't see them ever. I feel like trikes are going... Younger people are going more and more and more and more for trikes. Well, they said that on the video. Yeah. They made that comment that they're seeing more and more that young people are having a trike as their first bike. Mm -hmm. And yet I've not seen any young people on a trike. It's just our area. I mean... We're in a po heavily populated area. The East Coast, well, I mean, I lots know, of... Pride, like bike models are so are so regional. Like crossbones. How many crossbones? I had the crossbones. How many crossbones did you really see in Jersey? I knew three people. Three people. And that I knew right. with crossbones. I think there's a lot. So, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, but like when you go out west and people I've talked about west, it's like you see a lot of them. And I could never say that, even when I had the crossbones, I could never say that I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. When I go to the rally, I don't see a lot of them. Um, so, I feel like there might be areas of the country where the, the freewheeler is more heavily sold. It's just not, obviously, it's, it's not the crowd we hang out with, but it's not, I don't think it's in our region. If trikes are getting a lot more young people in, involved in it and in, involved in Harley Davidson riding in the culture, then great. I just I've yet to witness it myself. All for it. Yeah, all, all for it. it if it's working for them and they feel like they see those numbers, mm -hmm. great. But I haven't seen it in person yet. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Zeitz and, and I'm becoming more and more of a fan of Zeitz as time goes on. I think everybody had the reservations like, hey, the sneaker guy is going to come run Harley. Um, I think he does have a passion for this. Um, I, I like how he said, you know, you don't understand unless you ride one. And I, I thought that that was kind of a cool message from him. And then I feel like in True Zeit's fashion, there is a focus on apparel. Mm -hmm. They've done, they've released a whole line of 120th anniversary apparel, which I do plan on buying something. I mean, I'll have something. Yeah. Um, ab absolutely, I'll have something. They've done jackets. They're more focused. It seems like they're heavily focused on women's apparel. Which is, uh, you know, not a bad thing for Harley. No, I, I think that over the last five years or maybe even mm -hmm. more that you've seen a big increase in women riders. So it makes yeah. sense. Um, the other thing is their collections. They've always had collections like the Empire collection I talked about in the video. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, you know, there's always been like a collection or a series of parts like the Kahuna or what have you. But it seems like moving forward, they're going to make more of a concentrated effort to market those collections as a group. You know, as as a package. Yeah. And they had, I think it's called the Big Trucker Package or the Trucker Package that they had for like the Pan Am, which is like basically this whole accessory package to make it more of an adventure bike. Um, I like that they're doing that. It's, uh, they're really, it seems like as they're moving on now, their focus is going towards their accessories. And there are a lot of Harley accessories, but there's also a lot of aftermarket Harley accessories. So even though Harley might not compete in like bike sales with a lot of that aftermarket stuff, they definitely compete in accessory sales with, you know, how many, how many companies can you think of? I mean, whether it's Clockworks, whether it's Zero, you know, they've coming out with a new phone charger, you know, they're, they're coming out with, you know, a a lot of different accessories. I feel like this year and their plan probably for next year is even more. So I feel like they're really trying to tap into that aftermarket community. Yeah. I definitely think of uh, all the parts aftermarket parts that Harley does, those collections are what you see the most on people's bikes. Yeah. Um, you know, people go elsewhere for seats and tour packs and a lot of things, but you do see those grips and, you the know, floorboards. floorboards, passenger floorboards, you mm-hmm. know, um, stuff like that. Those those collections you see a lot of, and they seem to be pretty popular of all the aftermarket stuff they sell, so. And they're quality they're nice. parts. They are, they are. They are very nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we have the Kahuna grips, and mm-hmm. I love them, so, yeah. yeah, they make some nice stuff there. The floorboards are on my list, but, man, they're pricey. They're pricey all around. So every company that makes them. Every company makes floorboards is pricey. Unless you get something yeah. on Amazon, they're, they're pretty pretty expensive. So, uh, so overall, what, uh, a couple, anything, any key dislikes? No, I mean, I was kind of disappointed, I guess, like we said, in the Road, in the Road Glide 3, I, I kind of just, I, I guess... Being a, you know, being being a touring bike rider and, and loving my tour pack, like that's not something that I could consider. And I was very excited about a Road Glide trike coming out. Um, so I'm interested to see if they do come out with a Road Glide Ultra trike. Yeah. You know that I would hope to see. But what I, what I, my takeaway is, there may be another CVO coming. I mean, Zeitz alluded. They, they that, all but said it was. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, they alluded that there are more bikes coming. And there could be more CVOs coming, so I am excited to see what's coming next. Like, is the Bronx coming out? You know, is there you know going to be you know a soft tail CVO, which would be cool. Um, you know, what else? You know, what else might they come out? I gotta be honest. I wish they'd either bring the Bronx out or tell us that they're not doing it because I'm kind of tired of hearing about the Bronx. <laughs> Honestly, I have zero interest in it, and everybody else seems to be excited about it, and I'm just kind of tired of hearing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? There you go. Yeah. Maybe they'll do a sports to CBM. Maybe. Probably not. Um, so, yeah, I'm not as I'm not as disappointed in the Rogue Glide 3. Yeah. Um, I, I agree that I'd like to see it, you know, in the full touring mm-hmm. bike, but um, honestly, if, 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 if the trunk is, is a big enough trunk to kind of fit what I would have in my bags and my tour bag, then I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, I think it looks sleek, and I think that was kind of why they wanted to put it on that freewheeler, you know, it looks good. style, because it looks sporty. Um, doesn't look as old man-ish as, you know, the trike limited or whatever they're called, the, the no. Batwing trike, you know. It looks definitely a, like a younger person's bike. Um, so that, you know, yeah, that's a little bit of a negative. I would have liked to see that in... in with the tour pack and all that. And then the only other thing, and, and I'm not one of these people who feel like unless Harley comes out with a brand new style bike or a 191 motor, it's a total failure. Um, but I can see I can see people's point in that the CVO should have whatever the biggest motor is and possibly be the only one with that so you know putting that 117 in the breakout Mm -hmm. i can see people saying you know now you know the cvo isn't the only one with with that motor you know so i get that so it it would be nice if they had their own motor but um being as someone who's never going to buy a cvo i'm not overly heartbroken about it yeah but i do understand that line of thinking um i think cvo should have 131s in them i I mean i'm a believer that's how they should come 
Yeah. That's it. Maybe. Like, there shouldn't be, know. there shouldn't even be a decision. I'm a strong believer in a lot of people craving that 131 shouldn't be riding a 131. <laughs> That's just my opinion, but. Not my uh, business. Not not my business, but I, I'm not so sure that Harley's not worried about that. Yeah. All these, you know, knucklehead weekend riders uh, get out of 131 and kill themselves. Probably wouldn't be great for business. But, um, so, ending on positives, overall things that jumped out at you that you loved about it? Uh, I, I do. I would never buy one because it's just not my style of ride. I like the breakout. I like where they're going with the Sportster line. I think a lot of people were worried about that. Um, and I like the CVO paint. I mean, yeah. I'll take some hate for that. It, it's not. If, if you think that is 1982 Honda Goldwing paint, then I, I, don't even, I don't even know what to tell you. Um, I guess if you want to look at it from a distance with binoculars and say they're comparable, whatever. Whatever. So, I mean, yeah, I think I think those those were my, you know, real highlights. I mean, the stitching and the seats on that seat. There's so many little things about that CVO that are just so cool. And um, I think that's definitely a highlight. Yep, CVO, my favorite in a long time mm -hmm. yeah. out of their CVOs in recent years. I, I like the anniversary lineup. Mm -hmm. um, I really think that Heritage, we didn't talk about it, but I mm -hmm. think that Heritage looks really good. I yep. like the red in the bags. Overall, I love you know I love what they did with like incorporating the color into the seats and stuff like that. Yep, awesome. Obviously, we've discussed it a lot. I I'm super happy to see the Road Glide Three out. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, that is a step in the right direction. And uh, just overall, I, I I liked the release overall. Like I've already said, I liked it shorter, not a 45 minute you know hour thing. I liked it shorter to the point. Um, I thought it was great. Like we said, that they had. Uh, some YouTube, yep, you know, some people in there, some influencers. That was cool. So, unlike a lot of people who think the whole thing sucked and it was nothing but new paint, I, I thought it was. I thought they did a good job. Yeah, I so, thought so too. I think, and and you know, and they left us a little cliffhanger. A lot of cliffhanger to to, to see what they else is coming out. A lot you know? of cliffhanger. I think they're trying to make this whole year, the one twenty, this whole year, like a big deal. Mm -hmm. So. Hopefully there's more to come that might, you know, change everybody's mind that yeah. didn't enjoy hey, it. Hey, we're still in January. So we are in January. It's a long way to go. Year. Who knows if they're not going to do something special at the 120th uh, mm -hmm. hometown rally or whatever it's called in yep. June. I, you know I, what I, mean? I think they will. I think there might be some sort of unveiling then. I think there's going to be a bike on stage. That's, that's that, my opinion. That would be smart and really yeah. cool if they did and a lot of excited people if they were there. So, awesome. um, yeah, good Sweet. stuff. Well, listen, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and, uh, you know, give us a follow, man. Follow us on Instagram. We're on, we're on and, the gram. And don't forget to go in the comments and tell us why we're wrong. Oh, I'm sure they will. All, All right. right. Till the next one. Later.